What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to start painting a basic landscape. In this first part, I want to show you the first critical steps in painting the basic components such as the light and dark values, color saturation, and blending techniques that will greatly help with the later stages of the painting. One important thing I want to point out is how your eyes can play tricks on you when you choose your colors, and I'll show you why in this video. For the sky color, I'll be mixing ultramarine blue with titanium white and a very small amount of yellow. When you start painting a landscape, you have to lay some groundwork in the beginning. You'll be doing a lot of blending. This is going to be especially true in the background parts, because as things get further away, they're going to be more faded. Their color saturation will decrease and their contrast will be much smaller. For the ground, I'm going to be using different iterations of green, but they're all going to be desaturated. The beginning of painting does seem pretty easy because all you're doing is painting large shapes, right? It might seem that way at first, but there needs to be some planning to see what's going on in what location. The thing about the sky color is that it doesn't just stop up there, but I'm also adding to it the colors I'll be using for the objects that are in the distance. That includes the mountain as well. Also, notice how I'm creating a gradient of value here. The ground will be darker on the bottom, but as you go more towards the horizon, it'll brighten up. Creating transitions of value helps a lot with preventing the painting from looking flat. When the paint is still wet, this is a critical time when you can lay out all the objects that are in the background. I'm going to have a red tree over here, and so when I start painting it, I'm going to first paint the background leaves, and I want to do that during this window of time when the paint for the sky is still wet. I'll be doing the exact same thing when I paint the outlines of all the other trees and vegetation. When I'm painting here in the beginning, I want to make sure everything is integrated together through blending. If you don't blend the objects in the beginning, they will end up looking too stiff and segregated. This way, their colors can automatically blend together so they can have a more distant appearance. So for the mountain, I'm using a light brown color and painting it directly on the blue because I want these two colors to mix together. This way, the mountain will blend into the background. Even though it looks brown, the color is actually a very pale olive green color. That's the thing you have to pay attention to, the relative color. Let's look closely here. When this light brown is mixed with this light blue and a very small amount of yellow, it's going to turn into this very pale olive green shade. These blue and brown colors are naturally very different, and so even when one color is super pale, it's still going to look more intense if it's next to an opposite color. Same thing here with the highlights. Even though these are the sunlit spots here, the color is deceptively very desaturated. It's a pretty pale tan color, but relatively, it's a bright highlight against all the other colors around it. That's something to remember when you're painting things in the background. So in addition to the mountain, I'm going to paint all the background trees in the distance during this time while the sky color is still wet. They will blend very well into the distance. One really important thing I want to point out when you're painting distant objects is that you have a small margin of error when you are using different color values. Pay careful attention to how you mix your paints because a very small amount of paint makes a huge difference in how the mixture will turn out. I'm going to approach painting the clouds the same way as the mountain. Very desaturated paints, just keep making sure the colors are low in contrast. So as I continue painting the masses of trees going on here, I'm going to add more color to the ones that are getting closer to us. Objects in the background will have a tendency to be grayer, and when it comes to landscape paintings, this is often exaggerated to create more of a dramatic effect. As I continue filling in these clusters of trees and vegetation, notice the dramatic contrast we have here, from the almost black part closer to us transitioning to the lighter values ahead. I'm working from big to small, adding shape and depth to these shapes that are going to get more refined as I continue working on them. These clusters of plants have a lot of things growing in them, but here in the beginning I want to paint them as a whole and then create more separation as I go on. I'm going to be adding these dark smudges of paint into the section, then I blend them carefully so that I preserve their edges. The mistake that I see some artists do, and the one I used to do, is that they start painting the details too early. What happens is that the trees end up looking too grainy and rigid. The smudges I'm painting are the shadows inside the leaf clusters. The difference between real life and a painting is that in a painting we are not going to paint every minuscule detail and leaf. Instead we are painting textures, colors and values that imply that they're there. So here in the distance, I'm going to add some more random vegetation. Another thing I notice many artists do is that they don't paint enough detail in the distance. You gotta remember that distant objects still have a lot of other things going around them, not just all those pine trees. But at the same time, they won't be as sharp as the things up close. Now this ground here is going to have some texture that includes some rocky areas as well as some grass. All I want to do right now is paint the main shapes that will have more detail later. I'm also going to blend the place where the bottom edges of the vegetation meet the ground. Notice how we have the blending established on this right side. 
It's an overall transition of value from the dark all the way up to the light part here. You can see how the different smudges I painted here on all the objects help create this gradient effect on a large scale. Now let's go here to the left. I want this area to be the darkest part where it will greatly contrast with the right side. This entire area will have multiple objects that all have darker values. When you paint this side, paint attaches to the relative color values here. The brighter parts here are still going to be a lot darker than the other parts of the painting. Now let me show you real quick the difference between painting trees that are directly against the sky versus the ones we just did that are clustered together on the ground. What I want to do here is paint some negative space here that shows some openings inside the leaves that will reveal the sky. You're going to have a more general airy appearance to the formation of leaves here, so I'll be more deliberate in spacing them out later on. Let's go here where I want to break down this group of plants even more. So as the shapes I'm painting get smaller, I'm still paying attention to the object as a whole so that the original placement of the color values are consistent. You can see how I'm gradually adding more details, how these smaller clusters of leaves emerge from the shadows. I'm also using a bit of variety in my shades of green because variety combined with blending is a great combination for the stage of painting. Another thing I want to do with this particular tree is to add some flowers to the leaves. So just like with everything else, I'm going to add these smudges of magenta in here. As I make these smaller shapes here, notice that they're still blended. And here's how later on you see the combination of how we still have the original blending and the sharper detail inside these blended areas. Also notice how more colorful the sharper areas are as well, so that the desaturated foundational colors really bring out the vibrancy of the details. The ground is going to have two main components, the grass and the exposed dirt. Since this is a flat surface, I'm going to be painting mostly horizontal brushing. I'm going to be painting some desaturated green and brown smudges alongside each other and partially blending them here. As I progress, the shapes are going to get smaller and I'll be using different shades of value. Painting the ground will be mainly just adding texture to it with a variety of color and value. Another thing I want to do here is also adjust the dappled light, because I made them too horizontal, but since this part is a riverbank that slopes downward into the river, I want to create an angle at which these sunlit spots come in. So this is the first part of painting the ground, and I'll come back after this layer dries to add more detail. Let's go back to this tree we just did. Now I want to add some more shading to this tree. When you are adding the darker shades in this part, remember to stay consistent with how far away the trees are. The closer the trees, the darker the shadows, and vice versa. I'm not just picking a random dark color here, but this dark shade is the one that I feel is the right one for the distance this tree is, which is kind of in the middle. And so I do that with the other trees, as well as adding more light and overall rounding out these shapes. Remember to keep all these colors desaturated. Now let me show you what else I'll be doing with the ground. I want this area to be darker than the part we did earlier, so this way we can have kind of a light transition on this riverbank that adds an interesting effect to the overall painting. Also, this will enhance these bright dappled light spots so it will show some more sunlight shining through this dark area to the left. The rocks along the riverbank will be darker here as well, and this is another thing to remember. The objects that are closest to the edge of the painting tend to be darker and overall less noticeable so that the viewer pays more attention to the focal point of the painting. Okay, let me show you how I'll start painting the water. Yep, you guessed it. I'll be doing some more blending here with the shapes I'll be painting. The overall color scheme will be a desaturated aquamarine, and it'll vary in values so that we can create the different ripples and reflections here. Make sure your brushing is horizontal and that each tile of color is blended with the next one. Painting water will have especially lots of blending as we want to create a smooth surface. Later on, we'll paint more detail on here, but right now we're working from big to small. Another thing I want to point out is the overall value shift this water is going to have. How you have the dark part here, and as the river goes more to the distance, it captures some of the sunlight on it. Now let's do some more work on the mountain. For the snow, I'm going to use white, obviously, but it's going to have a tiny hint of yellow and brown because using pure white is too bright of a color. Just like with everything else, I'm painting these smudges on here that I also carefully blend amongst the edges. Don't overdo this part because it's easy to get carried away when painting highlights or extra detail. Now I want to paint the snow inside the shaded areas of the mountain. I'm adding a small amount of blue and desaturating it with some brown to offset the color. Same thing here, just adding these basic shapes that I'll break down later on in the painting. Notice how all these colors of the mountain, both the snow and the rocky surface all have a pretty close range of value. The mountain is really far away, and so these desaturated colors and low contrast should indicate that. This is pretty much it for the first stage of painting, where we did the basic background work, also adding the foundational colors and values in most places. Remember that this stage of painting is really important because you need to establish the proper light and dark values in the right places. 
Of course, you could make adjustments later on, but having a good foundation in the beginning makes it a lot easier to paint the details later on. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more tutorials like this. And stay tuned for part two where we get into more detail and finally finish this painting.